All right, in this video, we're going to learn how to take this photo of Jason Tatum and turn it into this. Before we get into the video, I want to say if you guys aren't already subscribed, please do so. I do a video every single Monday, and we are so close to that 500 subscriber mark, which is where I'm going to be doing my second graphics pack giveaway. One thing with graphic design is you need to have the elements in order to make a good graphic design. So you can see all of the different packages that I have. And that's something that I want to give to you guys. And I'm going to be doing that at 500 subscribers, 750 subscribers, and then at 1,000 subscribers. So I already gave away uh, nine of these folders. And I'm going to be doing another nine once I hit that 500 subscriber mark. So hit that sub button and let's get into the video. Alright, the first step you want to do is make your image clear. So I do this in every single video, but you click on your image and go to filter, camera raw filter. And then for this particular graphic, I increase the texture and clarity to sharpen the edges as well as increase the definition on his arms. And then you can also see that I increase the contrast, I decrease the highlights and the shadows as well as blacks and the whites. This is different in every single graphic. So you have to adjust those sliders in different ways for different graphics. All right, I then added an unsharp mask. You can do this by going to filter and then sharpen and go to unsharp mask. And so what you can do is you can change the amount, radius and threshold. So if you increase the amount, it sharpens it a little bit more. If you increase the radius, you can see how it makes it a little bit brighter. And then you can hit the preview button just to see how it looks before and how it looks after. Just a quick note here, sometimes I don't use unsharp masks. It really depends on the picture. If the picture is a little bit blurry, I do like to use unsharp masks, but most of the time I just use texture and clarity under camera raw filter just to make my image a little bit sharper. All right, the next thing I did was add a high pass filter. So I duplicated my layer and I put it on the top and I added a high pass filter by going to filter, other, and then high pass filter and then I put it on the blend mode of soft light. So you can see how the high pass filter makes a difference. Look at the before and after here. All right, the second step is to create highlights as well as uh, darken some of the shadows. So you can do this by making a levels adjustment and you are going to paint over the dark spots in your image. You're gonna wanna paint over your shadows with the blend mode on multiply and then you're going to invert your mask by hitting Command I and then painting back on with the white paintbrush. All right, the next thing you do is you're going to brighten the outsides of the player. And you can do this by making a levels adjustment and setting it to the blend mode screen. And then you're going to paint back on those highlights. The next thing we got is the black and white skin effect. This is a very popular method that a lot of professionals use. If you look in the top right hand corner, you can see that the skin is black and white, but the jersey is this original color. So you can do this by hitting black and white and you are going to clip it to the player. You can do this by hitting that button right there. And then what you're gonna do is hit Command I to invert the mask and then you're going to paint on the whites uh, with a white paintbrush selected. You're gonna paint it on and that makes that black and white effect that you saw. All right, let's learn how I did the flower background. So what I did is I have different flower overlays that I have just collected throughout my years of uh, being a graphic designer and what I did is I just put them in the background first and then I put a Gaussian blur on it so that the flowers look like they are far in the background and that the players are the main focus of the picture. And then I just added different flowers around the outside in order to make it look like my players were like coming out of the flowers. And it's a really unique design that I saw originally done by one of my graphic design friends and I thought I would do something pretty similar and the flowers around the outside really make a cool design that you guys should definitely think about incorporating into your designs. If you guys want the flower PNGs that I used within this design, just leave me a comment and I can put them in the description with the Google Drive link attached. The 
The next thing I want to teach you guys is about hue and saturation. So what hue and saturation is, is basically how you change the colors to match whatever color that you are looking for. So you can do this by going up to image and then go to adjustments and then go to hue and saturation. And then if you hit colorize, that makes it all one color. And what you do is you can slide the hue on the top till you get your desired color. And then the saturation just makes it like a little bit more saturated as you may imagine. What you can do is you can adjust the lightness then. So if you want a darker shade, you can adjust it to the black side. And if you want a lighter shade, you can adjust it to the white side. And that's pretty much it for the background portion regarding the flowers specifically. I'm gonna go over the rectangles that I use as well as a little bit of the shading technique that I use in this next part. All right, so for the rest of the background, I added a square in the background and then I created a clipping mask for a picture of Jason Tatum. So you can just add a rectangle in your background and you can adjust it however you want and create a clipping mask by hitting control and clicking on your player and then going down to create clipping mask. What that does is make sure it only fits into that square or whatever you clip it to. I also did this with a picture of TD Garden, which is the Boston Celtics arena. For the overlays as well as lighting, so I added a Jason Tatum on the bottom and you can see the text that I used in the top left corner. So if you guys want to write that down, that's the text I used. And I also added a drop shadow to that. So you can see the drop shadows dimensions that I used regarding the distance as well as the size. Also on the bottom, I added a picture of some roses, but you can't really tell that I did. It's just basically some overlay that creates a little bit of depth within the photo. I just put it on black and white and I turned the fill all the way down. I also added a city in the background. You can see it in the top right hand corner there and the same thing, black and white, and I just made it super, super small. The next thing I did was add the Boston Celtics logo to the bottom right-hand corner. I did this by doing the same method, by putting a purple rectangle and then creating a clipping mask with the logo attached to it. Also, I have these white specks that go all the way around the image, and that's just to add some effects to it, make it look a little bit cooler. You can see them on the outside of the flowers as well as on the purple. And then the last thing, and I think it's the most important thing in the whole graphic, is the lighting. So you can see I added some black overlays, which I created myself with just a black paintbrush and I put it on soft light, as well as the blend mode of overlay. And what that does is it just makes those outside of the edge a little bit darker. And it really focuses on the main part of the graphic, which is the player as well as the flower. Before I show this final result here, please take a second to like the video, uh, leave me a comment if you guys learned anything, it really helps out my channel, and uh, as always, I appreciate you watching, and this is the final result.